Hello guys, Junior back again. Well, this week we're going to do a hard review, and this hard review is going to be the Mega Drive. Well, this is my Japanese Mega Drive, and we're not going to hard review this one. We're going to review this Mega Drive, which is a brand new FPA, FPGA uh, based uh, Mega Drive system. Um, it's made by Analog, who also did the Super NT and the NT, which is an S and a Super NES FPGA system, uh, designed by Kevtress. It's a very clever system indeed. Um, it outputs at uh, up to 1080p. Uh, plays pretty much all your Mega Drive stuff. Plugs into a Mega CD. Can also, it's not official at the moment, but you can use a 32x on you. Uh, partly, Kev just has got it working with the new um, digital to analog converter, which plugs in the back of this system, which converts it back to I think it was S Video and Composite. He has found a way again the 32x running, but um, it hasn't been released as yet. Um, I haven't got a 32X, so I'm not too bothered about that. But anyway, let's open this up, which is going to be a little bit awkward on camera. So, I'll take the top off. Right then, so what you actually get in this box, you get this system for you, which is the Mega SG itself. And if I hold it up, give you an idea what it looks like. I've got the Japanese style model, which has got the... Um, burgundy and the sort of purpley colored sort of buttons uh, it takes all your original cartridges a little cartridge slot really neat and small machine it's got hdmi on the back and it's got a micro um, sd and sd a micro usb uh, cable for power um, and on the side there i don't know if you can see it is a slot for the um SD card. Uh, the SD card slot is used to upgrade the firmware. So this is upgradable. So if there is any problems, Kevtress is pretty damn quick on fixing the problems and adding new firmware. You basically just dump your firmware on the SD card, plug it in, it flashes the machine and applies all the fixes. Uh, so we'll take that out. What else you get in the box as well is you get, if I can get this out while I'm on camera, you also get a what looks to be a little mouse mat, but what this actually does is when you plug the machine and put it on a mega CD, it's a little bit lower than the connector. Um, on the side by here, this comes off. It's a bit hard to see, but this comes off and it's got the mega CD edge connector. Um, what this allows you to do is to actually sit on this little this little mat and it fits perfectly in the mega CD. So it's a nice little addition. Um, what also you get in the box as well, you get an analog branded uh, HDMI cable. You get a micro USB cable, and unlike a lot of the other mini systems, which is this is not a mini system, but um, unlike a lot of the other systems, hang on, guys, if I can get it out of the box, which I'm trying and it's stuck in here. That's it, I got it out. One second, guys, let me get the other piece out. Um, you also get a little uh, power adapter. This is two odd amps, I'm not sure if it's 2.6. I've been running this through a little shaver adapter, it's got a one amp fuse on it and it hasn't blown the fuse so I'm pretty sure this machine takes well less than an amp of power to run. So you should be able to run this off your TV if you've got a, a smart TV, which I haven't tried yet but I will do. Also included in the box is a little converter for using Mass System games. And yes, this does play Mass System games out of the box as well. So that's everything you get in the box. I say this machine uh, out of the box it plays Mega Drive games. Um, it also comes with a unreleased game called Ultra, Ultra Core by uh, Dice back in the day. Apparently it was something like ninety nine percent complete, and it was lost and found on a dead hard drive a little while ago. But this has actually got this included um, with the converter. You plug the converter in, and you can use all your uh, Mass System cartridges as well. But the cool thing about this is as well, there's alternative jailbreak firmware for this. So when you buy it, you basically just got to use your cartridges. Uh, works with the EverDrive as well. So I've got here. EverDrive just plugs in like normal. Uh, works, no problems at all. Uh, the cartridge slot is, you know, basically got the flat square edges on it. So um, it'll fit any of the cartridges out on the Mega Drive, including the Sunsoft ones. Uh, but I uh, say so what I was uh, saying about the jailbreak. If you put the jailbreak firmware on here, it allows you then to put everything, all your ROMs, all your anything basic you've got, all on the SD card. 
and you can play your Mega Drive games from the SD card. What it also allows you to do once you flash the firmware, it allows you to play uh, Mega Drive games, it allows you to play Mass System games, it allows you to play Game Gear games, it also allows you to play um, Sega SG-1000 games, and it also allows you to play uh, ColecoVision games, which is a bit odd because it was not Sega, but it allows you to play ColecoVision. And as this is hardware FPGA based, once the, once the chip is configured with the core, it is essentially a Mega Drive or a Mass System or an SG-1000. It's, you know, it is exact. It's not emulation. It's completely lag-free. Um, it has multiple video options, multiple sound options. Uh, we'll go into that once I get it plugged up and um, we'll show you the game. So I'll show you basically how all for the menus. I'll show you sort of a lot of the scaling options. And I'll show you some of the options that I've set, which uh, thanks to Firebrand X, who's put all the video settings up, including, I can't remember, he linked uh, to another guy, which I can't remember his name. Uh, which did the sound settings for every revision of the Mega Drive and uh, you can get that from Firebrand X's uh, YouTube channel and there's a link to uh, Google Docs with a doc one so he runs through all the settings to show how to set it up and I have to say it looks fine mate and if you see this video thanks very much for your settings so what we'll do is uh, we leave you here we'll, go, we'll come back and I'll get it plugged up and now uh, we can see how this thing performs so um, hold the line a second we'll be back in a minute Right guys, here's the interface. There's a few things I'm going to need to do each time I go into the course, because I've set the course up and run my scan lines, but unfortunately scan lines don't come out particularly too well on YouTube. So I will have to do a quick adjustment when I run for the course. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll run straight and do that now. Um, first thing I did with the scan lines, I changed the, the gamma and put the gamma up to compensate for the black scan lines I've set up, um, which looks pretty fantastic when I've got it set up. but um, as for when we're uh, doing this, it's not going to look too good. So if I go to scan lines and turn scan lines off, right. here we go. Right then, guys. So when you turn the machine on, you can change different options, but you pretty much end up with this screen. Um, in uh, settings, there is there's quite a lot you can actually do in here. Um, you pretty much got, if you look in system settings, there's settings you can change the color of the menus the highlighting like you see the blue highlight you can change that you can put hotkeys on controllers you can change the startup options you can take the analog logo off and have a uh, bootstrap you can boot directly in if you want you can put delays in the um, timing for the boot up uh, you can boot direct the cartridge as well if you just want to use it practically exactly like a mega drive um, in hardware uh, this is used here to set the region of the game. So if you get any region lock games, this machine will automatically pick up uh, and try to work out the region of a cartridge and run it. Most of the time it works. But if you get run into problems, you can actually change the region here and just force it to that region. So you can pretty much get around all region lock. Um, you can turn the auto detection off, which is I've got on at the moment. Uh, you can force the free buttons. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what that does. Uh, certain music players slow when checked right okay um, SD card speed uh, you pretty much want that on the fastest possible as long as you've got a good quality SD card and to be honest if you're buying this machine you want a good quality SD card and they don't cost that much these days basically um, yeah what I forgot to mention as well um, the machine comes in Roughly, if you're in the UK with the exchange rate, it works at 198 quid de delivered, uh, but then you'll have to pay 42 pound import duty on the top of it. So this is like 240 pound all in for the machine. Um, it's, it is a lot, but you, when you consider the FPGA loan inside this machine, costs about 60 quid. Uh, it's not actually that bad, and for what it does, it, it's well worth the money. Um, I'm using the optional. Um, 8-bit dough m30 2.4 gigahertz pad which i did a review of a little while ago fantastic pad works amazing with this machine and it's got a button for the menus for this machine which is brilliant but you can use your original joy pads or any other pads you want but if you're going to buy an 8-bit dough pad get the m30 2.4 gigahertz version over the bluetooth version reason for that is the bluetooth version has something like 20 21 milliseconds of input lag on it which is just over a frame and a half uh, or roughly about by there. Uh, this one is four milliseconds, so literally it's lagless. Anyway, um, 
we can do in here as well uh, individual options I'll, I'll run through all these options um, you've got your resolutions you can check out you got your pal resolutions you've got anything up to 1080p 60 1080p 50 um, this is the height ends we'll go into this a little bit later this is a uh, vertical height settings so you basically you can mess around and stretch the screen all that type of stuff uh, scalers you can add fancy uh, emulator scalers to all the games you can smooth the edges off um, do interpolation i can add mess around with all that stuff and you can turn an x-ray filter on which turns everything black and white which is a bit odd but you can add scan lines you've got normal scan lines you have hybrid scan lines which basically from what i've read they darken or brighten the scan lines depending on the color of the background so it looks a little bit more like a crt um extra features uh you can mask the borders like on mega drive games you usually get like a, a colored border which i think is color display one or something displays around the border uh, you can basically crop that off which makes it look a lot nicer uh diva blending is like say sonic 2 when you had the waterfalls and it looks like a transparency effect that's that effect is used through composite it doesn't really work properly in rgb or in hdmi but you can you can use the diva blending to get that effect back i haven't bothered doing it i i hear from a various other videos i've watched this machine the effect can be a little bit hit and miss depending on where you set it so i've just left it off um buffered mode fully buffered uh, as it says, but original speed, no tearing, but uh, a bit more lag. So you can have the original 59 point something, 5.6 or something like that, uh, megahertz of the Mega Drive, but it is buffered, so you will get about a frame of lag. You can have the zero mag lag mode, which is what I'm using now, and you can have single buffered. Uh, so you get a little bit of tearing, uh, low lag, and original speed. So I've been using the zero lag mode. Um, the colors you can do limited range full range uh, you can change the gamma settings which is what i did to compensate for my scan lines and uh, the, this is a new option for the dac rgb uh, mode the dac is coming out to plug in the back i don't think it's actually been released yet but the option is there so you can uh, mess around with the different options on, on that which is quite nice because you can plug in the crt then then again to be honest if you are buying a new mega drive you're buying this you're really buying this use it on a flat screen tv and the hdmi mode on it so i can understand what some people would like to put in a crt but i don't obviously see the point of it you may as well just keep your mega drive if that's the case um and the advanced mode turns your options off like it gives you less options basically um there's a lot of options on this machine uh there's headphone settings machine does have a headphone socket which i did forget to show you uh just like the original mega drive but you have to adjust the volume in here including the impedance for the he headphones uh channel volumes is all to do with the sound chips for each core each machine um you can mess around with the left and right i've adjusted all these according to firebrand x i i, I do apologize i can't remember the, the guy that's supplied for fire firebrand with all the settings but um i will put two links to his two videos and you can watch the videos are quite comprehensive and how to set this up and he, he links to the documents to ship with the numbers but I'll, I'll link that in the video uh so I, i've set these up um channel panning that type of stuff so basically you can do a hell of a lot with the sound on this you can cartridge audio which some cartridges use the cd audio on the cartridge audio at the same time uh cd audio you can automatically apply but you can change the volume on it advanced filters uh a lot of mega drives depending on what model got all had different some of them had different sound chips but they they use different filters so they all sound a little bit different with the version one mega drive sounding the best i think it's like uh revision seven or something or va7 it sounds best i have set this up thanks to the guide to exactly how the revision one sets up and it sounds pretty fantastic i will show you the difference uh, with the filters when you turn it on and off what i would say out of the box this machine um it's got really clean um fine really high clarity sound unfortunately it is a bit on the bright or very high pitch sort of uh, times of certain games will probably do red in a little bit you do need to adjust it and with the low pass filter it, it does make quite a bit of a difference ladder effect is uh, at the end of the mega drive sound when you get like a sound effect you get like a ch -ch -ch, and it like sort of um it decays off you can adjust and put the decay back in uh and then you can mess around with the sine wave and the waveform which i, I haven't done um 
system I went through them. Oh, system, you can do a couple of things. You, you can change the menus. Uh, you can have menu styles, menu font, um, high res browsing menu, which is what you want basically. Uh, the starter options, hardware, and there's an LED on the machine which changes different colors, and you can basically set the LED, LED and colors. So you can pretty much mess around with that, do whatever you want. Core options, um, this gives you Mega CD BIOS and various other things you can add to that and it just tells you about the machine licensed uh, when it was when it was made all that type of thing and you can save your settings which i'm not going to do so what i'll do we're in the mega drive core so we'll start off i say ultra core was a brand new mega drive game that was found on a dead hard drive apparently and it was made by dice back in the day it was supposed to be for the mega drive and the amiga but i never got it released but it was actually on here so we'll uh, load it up what you notice as well with the internal SD card, which I haven't actually chugged in the machine. So I don't know if it's a good idea putting it in here now. But we will we will see if anything happens when I slug it in. Nope. Okay, we, we're good. Hopefully it'll read it. Um, yeah, so they they managed to get hold of this and it's been released on um, the Mega SG. Uh, there is also a cartridge version of this coming out for the Mega Drive as well. So I'll give you a quick look at this. And there's uh, Ultra Court. It's quite. It's a bit like a Terrigan type game. I have been playing it quite a bit. It's a little bit messy. I will say um, the controls are a little bit weird on here. There's some weird button combinations to do things. But it, it's not a bad game. There is a few uh, bits where you've got to travel vertical, which are a bit of a pain in the ass with a platform jumping. They could have done a little bit of work on that. But as a unreleased freebie game on you, it's actually pretty good. It does have um, a password save system, so um, when you go back to a level using the password save, you get all your continues back and you get um, all your lives back, which is quite nice. So I'm in the middle of trying to finish this game at the moment. You can't turn into a ball like um, Terrigan, but um, you can bounce on enemies and you do get smart bombs and various other weapons as you go through. Anyway, so that's Ultra Core, guys. Um, it's probably worth play. So. So with the 8-bit dough pad you can press this button and go back to the menus. So what we'll do now is we'll go into cores. Uh, when you flash this machine and you put the jailbreak firmware on it, you, it adds all these cores. So literally you just don't have to use the cartridge anymore. The options there if you want to use the cartridges. And it, it gives you different cores. It's at the moment we're in the uh, Mega Drive core. So I'll go into the Mega Drive. I'm using the EverDrive uh, game list setup. So, we will go to Streets of Rage. Uh, Streets of Rage 2. The reason I'll go to this is because of the sound. Right, here we go. So, I will show you, um, if we go to the options. And then we'll go to BGM. Turn it up so I can hear what's going on. Right, so you can hear the music playing at the moment. Uh, just let turn it up a minute so I can... So I've got a headset on, it's a bit awkward to hear what's going on. Right, so you can hear the music playing at the moment. And um, what, what you can do, if you press the um, button and start, you can go back to audio settings. Basically, the way I've set this up is if you've got a filter, you can turn the filter off. So if I turn my capture up a tad, you can hear this a little bit better. Right, this is what the audio sounds like, out of the box, roughly. We'll cancel back and I'll change to a different tune. It's fine. This is what the sound sounds like out of the box. It's good, the sound is really nice out of the box, it's really high cloud, you can put in high definition sound as well. Um, but it can be, it can be a bit grating, especially when it comes to sound effects. So what you do is, you set the filters up and stuff, so you basically put the low pass filter on, and it changes the sound completely. I know it's going to instantly sound like it's just got a bit bassy, but it sounds more like a Model 1 Mega Drive. Well, there's a... Uh... 
go, what a do, I'll turn the sound off again, so to give you an idea, we'll, st we'll play the game and start playing it. So if I go back and turn the actual uh, low-pass filter off. Sorry if uh, my voice is going a little bit quiet, because I have turned the, the uh, audio up quite a bit. Right, so this is using um, audio as it comes out of the box. Which does sound very nice. But it is a bit on the high pitch, but very bright sort of sounding. I'll play for a little bit, give you an idea what's going on. Kill this guy and I'll swap the sound back. Oh, I want So if I go back to where I put the actual filter on, I'll turn the filter back on. Right, so this is with the filter on. It sounds more like a big drug one. And it's got the ladder effect turned up a bit. It is much better with the filter, especially when I play ultra core. Ultra core is quite, it's quite harsh, on, harsh on the ears to be honest. Ultra core. Anyway, guys, that's the sounds difference. So, I'll turn the sound back down a minute. Turn it back down to where it was, which is roughly about there. It. It's all if you can still hear me fine. That's the sound settings. So if any of you actually want to copy these sound settings, but they, they will be in uh, Firebrand X's video. I so say what you need to do, you need to go to your channels, you need to adjust it to the settings by there. And this is for a Model 1 Mega Drive. Depending on what sort of Mega Drive you, uh, you quite like. That's the settings for there. Um, you need to change the cartridge volume, you need to change the ladder effect to free. And you need to go to advanced filters and then use them settings. And uh, those settings will give you uh, a Mega Drive 1, sort of version 1 sounding sound. So let's go off that. Gives it a lot more bass as well, which is a lot nicer. What I forgot to do as well, because we're in the Mega Drive core and I've set it up for scan lines. Um, let's have a look. Video should hopefully be set the same. Yeah, we are, we are, we're good. Yeah, so basically when you want to change the game, you basically just go back to the menu. Um, pick a game you want. Actually, it is, the menu's gone black now for some reason. I don't know why I've done that. Um, so you can just pick a basic game you want, so I'll go back into there, and we'll have the really, really crap Rastan Saga 2, which is an awful game, which I did actually finish the PC Engine 1 CC dick, oh god, I don't know why I put myself through that to be honest. What I don't like about this version of the game is you press fire, you're walking forward and you press fire, and he does does an extra step forward like that. That's literally a tap forward. Very annoying. But as you can see, the video output on this uh, machine is pretty uh, exceptional. Say my capture device, by the time it gets onto YouTube and it gets converted and converted down, it's not going to look as nice as it does actually on my TV, but I assure you this looks really sweet on my TV. what the hell happened with uh, Tato. They did the original Rastan, which is pretty awesome, and then they made this crap. You know, the, the arcade one does have some pretty nice music, to be honest. So, that's the Mega Drive core. So, when you go back out of a core, you go back to your menus, you cancel, and it goes back to cores. So, when you want to change, we'll put the Mass System core on now. 
so we'll go to my system um i will need to change my video settings again because like i said before i've um set them up all right it's actually done it yeah, that's quite handy scan lines all right no scan lines uh color buff say so the settings i've done there is to compensate for the darkness of the scan lines so i will come out of that so we should be back to normal um so what this machine will do with the mass system as well it'll play literally everything including um all the japanese mark free games as well and it plays stuff with um, the fm sound chip you can actually you can toggle that on the menu you restart the rom and it'll play with the fm so if i pick something that's got the fm sound chip i've got to think it's what has got the fm sound chip um I think this one's got FM. Do, 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 do. So basically you get a perfect mass system. Let's have a look if if this is actually playing the FM sound. So if I go to audio and then i go to uh i gotta remember the auto settings though um this is pretty much my settings for mass system um uh, like i said i'll link you to the videos anyway so you can uh, get all the settings for that and uh, that's my channel settings i remember where there is an option for fm sound but i can't remember where <laughs> where the fm sound is now um core options is it ah you are fm so if I untick FM, the sound will actually go off. But if you go back and load that ROM again, you should now. See? You can now get the uh, PG, um, a PGM. I can't think of what it's bloody called now. Um, now we get the Master System sound chip. The PSG, not PGM. I PGM on the mind then. Uh, the PSG sound chip. So it's pretty cool to experiment with some of these uh, games and see what the FM sound chip sounds like. The only thing I would say, the FM is, is way technically a lot better than the um, PSG. Um, I suppose over the years I got so used to playing the mass system in the PSG, I sort of prefer the PSG sound chips. That's the soundtrack, sorry. So they sound really nice. So what we'll do is we'll put it back on the FM sound. Just because it's a little bit different. And we'll go to Gulvarius. Gulvarius, where is Gulvarius? Was it called Gulvarius on the Japanese version? That's the question. Because that's got a really nice FM sound. Um, yeah, let's try on here. Gulvarius, USA, Europe. Does this have the FM sound? Yep. I know the Japanese one does. Quite cool game this is, but Zelda like, but it's got really cool music. We'll see what the music sounds different now. This is with the FM sound chip. Spike those things. So the sound's not bad. I still think the, P, uh, the PSG sound chip is better. So we'll let's go back to options again, core options. We'll go to FM sound. Uh, we'll go back and we'll load this ROM again. But you can't change it on the fly. That would be quite nice. See, another music loads are better. PSG sound chip um, does have a bit of charm to it. I don't, I, I don't know why. I still think the PSG sounds better on this game. So pretty much that's your mass system core. Um, your mass system core will also play SG-1000 because that's pretty much built into the mass system. So if we go back and I go to my SG-1000, the SG-1000 was Sega's first ever console. Um, it does have some pretty nice games. Uh, there's a lot of crap, I suppose, but um, some of the games are pretty cool. Bombjack being one of them. So a lot more basic than the mass system. 
So this is uh, Bomb Jack on the um, SG-1000. So I think I'm not a big fan of Bomb Jack, but I quite like this version. Do, 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 do. Even though it's a little bit hard to see Bomb Jack himself. So, um, that was a really nice. Oh, no, that was. Um, I was seeing a Reclico vision then. Uh, let's have a look. Experion. This is also on the NES. Weird shoot em up pieces with uh, some weird backgrounds and stuff. But yeah, so you can you can pretty much play all your SG-1000 games. Uh, what Analog are going to bring out shortly as well, they're going to bring out adapters for all these. So you'll get adapter for the Game Gear, you get adapter for the SG-1000, the... Um, I think they're doing an SG-1000 adapter anyway. You'll get a uh, Sega Mark III, which is a mass system adapter, and you get a My Card adapter as well. So, and um, good old Flicky, which... I'm not a huge fan of, but a lot of people love it. So this is uh, SG-1000. It's quite a nice little bonus. You can actually play all these games as well. So we'll go back. Uh, we'll go back to uh, the cores and we will choose the Game Gear core. And as before, I do have to change my options. A tad. Uh, scanline. No scaler. Scanlines. Yep. Change the color buff. Uh, back to where it was. Uh, right. Yeah, so pretty much you can play your Game Gear games uh, in full screen, which I suppose can look a bit sort of in your face. You've never seen Game Gear games look so big. Come on, Virgin Interactive. Get past this crap. Rustly. Come on, how long does it take to get to the actual game? Yeah, yeah, come on. God, trust me to pick a game, it takes forever to get to the game. Yeah, so you can play your, you play your game gear games, basically uh, nice full screen if you want. Actually, we choose a better game now, because that game's pretty crap. Um, let's have a look. Uh, what was Fatal Fury Special? Okay, Fatal Fury Special on the uh, Game Gear. Let's get that going. Let's get some fighting game action. Oh my. Not sure if I've ever played this on the uh, Game Gear. Probably look quite, would have looked quite nice on the Game Gear screen, this would have. Let's go, moves. <laughs> Not bad, considering, actually. Yeah, all the moves are there. Pick his ass. So, yeah, so pretty much you can play all your Game Gear stuff. And this might be quite good to have a look at the um, smooth in. So if I pause it, and then we'll go into menus, and we'll go into video, and we'll go to scalers. So you can have no scaling at all. So you can have um, HQ2X. You see, it makes a difference if I turn it back off. It smooths those edges off. Um, but, you know, some people might like that. I quite like the scan line, so I don't tend to have that on. you got HQ3X. Smooths it not as huge, it just moves the screen more than anything else. HQ 4X, which is uh, like a little a little sharper, I would say. If you look at the dots towards the bottom of the screen, it's a little bit sharper, that one is. And you've got uh, Scale 2X, uh, Scale 3X, and you have X-Ray, which I don't know why you play like that. Um, you can output in DVI mode, and you can turn the um, interpolation or an interpolation, whichever you want to call it. You can turn them on and off as well. So if I go to HQ4S, and then I turn that off, you can see the difference. Well, it's a bit hard to see the difference in mix, but if we go to no scaling, and I'll turn them off, it don't make a huge difference. But yeah, you can mess around with, with the screen as you like. Um, 
So if I go to 4x, I'll turn that on and we'll go back to the game. And that's what it looks like with the 4x scaling on. So it's all like a little bit smoothed off. And I'll put it on the game gear as a bit of a, an extreme version of it because obviously it's very bloggy. So if you don't like your scan lines, perhaps using the, uh, the little sort of scalers to smooth the edges off is probably the way to go. We'll try a different game. Let's try... Ah, good old Wonder Boy. That's what Wonder Boy looks like with a scaler. I'll show you with a scaler off in a minute, so we'll start it up. <laughs> that almost looks like um, like a modern version of it. That's mad. This shows you off quite nicely. So, we will go to scalers again. Uh, we'll go to video, uh, we'll go to scalers, uh, we'll turn the scalers off, and then we'll go back. That's what it looks like with the scaler off. And if we go back again, put the scaler on. Oh, put that on. Um, they're quite different. This game really does quite show you what's going on. That's really smooth off, that is. Uh, so if that is literally like a sort of uh, downloaded modern version. It would look more like this. I don't really like that look, to be honest, because it doesn't, it doesn't look right to me. But um, we will turn that off a second. What I would normally do is put the scan lines on, but this is not really going to show up properly on uh, YouTube. I'd have uh, my game looking a little bit like this, but I have adjusted it for the darkness of the scan lines. Even though this is probably going to look terrible on uh, YouTube. So what we'll do, we'll turn that off again. Actually, what we'll do, we'll just go out to the core. So that's the Game Gear core. Um, and the final core you've got on you is uh, ColecoVision. A uh, bit odd I had a ColecoVision, but... Uh, I ain't complaining. Um, I tell you, ColecoVision has got a really, really quite impressive version of Donkey Kong. You know, I've actually owned the cartridge of this, but I've never owned a ColecoVision. ColecoVision always takes a little bit to set up, I don't know why. Um, so we'll go back the same, I'll do the video options again. So I want to turn my scalers off. I want to turn the scan lines off and I want to change my gamma back to my original. Yeah, so this is the ColecoVision core, which I, I think looks really nice, the ColecoVision core. I, think the, I don't know if it's the resolution the ColecoVision runs at, but um, which is low, obviously. But um, NARF looks good on you. And this is quite an uh, impressive version of uh, Donkey Kong. Oh, typical, it runs out as a barrel gets me. Let's see if I can complete the level. I wonder if the arcade tricks work on this version. I admit, mine, when the Clico Vision came out, it would have been um, quite an impressive version to have. Probably going to end up falling for the same trick again now, wouldn't I? Should have enough to kill these two things. Right. See if I can get right at the top. It's gonna die then. Ooh, that was lucky. Plays a little bit weird though, this, uh, this version does. Looks a bit so. It's a little bit slow on the ladders. That's a ColecoVision core, so we'll have a go with something else. Uh, what else ColecoVision did? A lot of ColecoVision games, I don't know what they are. I've never actually um, played on a lot of them, so... An impressive little machine for his age, I think, the ClicoVision. 
shoot him up. Oh yeah, I had to go with this actually. This is an odd one. It's a little bit like Galaga and Space Evaders, but the enemies can come from behind you, and as you can see, the ship can fire backwards as well. Don't know why he forces you to go for that intro. Yeah, it's quite an interesting one, this is. So you can basically fire both ways. It's a bit weird. Ooh, that was lucky. Quite an interesting sort of um, Space Invaders game. Plays quite well, actually. It uh, plays rather nice on the pad. Ah. Do so we have one more ColecoVision game? Um, River Raid, that's a uh, Atari game. At least I think it was originally an Atari game. Rock and Bolt. Um, Got to sneeze him in the guys. Hang on. Did review on this game before quite an impressive little uh, puzzle game quite an interesting little puzzle game actually for it is quite unique basically you've got to uh, move the uh, you've got to move the um, blocks around and you use your rivets to put them in place actually it's going to take a little while to show you that game so let's have a look if i can find anything just quite easy tapper oh okay Let's have a look at Tapper on this machine. Oh, Tapper looks quite nice. <laughs> uh, haven't really played Tapper very much. So, that's Tabba. So if we go back to the main menu. Yeah, so that's pretty much all the cores. Um, so as a bit of a sum up, what I think of this machine. So the machine you can buy from Analog themselves. You have to get it from the US. So if you live in the UK, you are going to have import duty. It works out roughly about 190 quid delivered, the machine. And that will be a three-day delivery service. And you will get charged £42 import duty. So it'll work out roughly about 240 so say it's up to you then with the machine, out of the box, like I said, it comes with a ma um, mass system converter, it plays Mega Drive games, plays mass system games, uh, plays them perfect. I think it has, it also plays, uh, virtual racing works, the cartridge with a chip, that works fine. Um, I haven't tried a huge amount of cartridges on it, because there's loads of videos out there, now, out there now with loads of people trying various cartridges and letting you know what works. Pretty much, I think it's close to 100% of everything on the Mega Drive that works. Uh, the clone cartridges work on you. Also, the Everdrives work on you as well, which is perfect. But obviously, with the flash in the custom firmware, you don't need an Everdrive, essentially. Um, so, we'll plug in a Mega CD. Uh, so, you can... You can Use different versions of the Mega CD BIOS as well, so you can boot it up in Japanese mode, play Japanese Mega CD games if you want, or American or UK Mega CD games. Um, it uses all the original pads and accessories, uh, but I, like I said, you can get the wireless pad, the um, 8 bit do M30 2.4 gigahertz pad, which is pretty fantastic. So have a look at my review of that. Brilliant pad. Um, you can use that on it. Um, it doesn't work with the 32X. At, at the moment essentially it does work with the 32x now but you do need your panel you do need that uh, DAC that goes in the back so there's not as far as i know there's not exactly a, an um a 32x core so i don't think you'll be able to put a custom firmware on here and run 32x games i don't think it's going to work like that it's mainly you need that DAC and then the 32x feeds the video back in and then it comes out but apparently uh, he has got that working um it does work with the lock-on cartridges so like uh, Sonic 3, so you can put Sonic 2 on the top of it, all that works fine. Um, I say once you put the custom firmware on it, 
essentially you've got everything you need on an SD card. Like I said, it plays Mega Drive games, Master System games, SG-1000 games, uh, Game Gear games, and um, ColecoVision games. Um, and it, it pretty much does all them perfect. I haven't noticed any lag whatsoever with this thing. It seems, as it says, completely lagless, and apparently from all the testing that people have done, it is lagless. The sound out of the box um, is good. The clarity is fantastic on it, and you can hear every little piece of sound. But it is very bright, and it can be a big greeting when um, you listen to certain games, like Ultra Course, a classic example of it. It's really great in the sound after a while. It gives you a bit of headache. But with the sound options that Firebrand X have chucked up in his videos, um, you can tailor that sound essentially to whatever you like. So if you like the Mega Drive 2 sound, for instance, you could tailor it to the Mega Drive 2. Or if you've got a Wonder Mega or you've got the handheld Mega Drive, you can you can tailor the sound to each one of them. But I'm going for the Mega Drive 1 because uh, that's what I've always had and supposedly that's the best sound. You can tailor it to a Mega Drive 1. It, it, apparently, to me, it sounds pretty much smack on, but apparently there is a, it's not quite but pretty much it's there but you can mess around with these sound things to do whatever you want so the sound is pretty fantastic or you can just play the have really high clarity um hd really clean sound if you want to so it depends what you, what you like really the video options are pretty amazing with all the scan lines and all the filters and everything you can pretty much mess around with this and get it set up exactly as you want you can play it in widescreen if you want you can play it in 4.3 which i don't know why you play in widescreen but you can do if you want, if that's your thing. So the machine comes with Ultra Core as well, which is that unreally skim. Um, can I show you tools? Uh, in tools, uh, you've got a controller test. So you can test the buttons on your controller and see how they work. Uh, which is pretty cool. The only problem is I don't know how to get back out of this. Ah, go back. And you can use cheat codes as well. So if you're into using cheat codes on your uh, Mega Drive, you can actually use um, all... I'm not sure if the action replay... It might be action replay codes. I've got a feeling it's not action replay codes. I think it might be Game Genie codes work on you. So you can use all the codes as well. Um, so what do I think of the machine? Got to be honest, I'm really impressed with the machine. I love the Mega Drive. It's probably my third favourite console of all time. And I'm really happy with this. I think it's pretty excellent. Uh, I say you do have an original Mega Drive and a Framemeister. Uh, Picture-wise, it is a bit nicer than the Framemeister, but if you've got a really good RGB cable and a really nice Mega Drive with good output and the Framemeister, that looks pretty damn good as well, to be honest. Um, sorry, I had to cough in, sorry. Um, that looks pretty fantastic as well. But this is pretty much, I think, the best your Mega Drive games are ever going to look at. I look like sorry. Uh, like I said, you can use your scan lines, you can do your filters and everything. So, would I recommend this machine? Hell yes, definitely. If you like your Mega Drive, I would definitely. If you've got the money, I know it's a little bit, you know, two hundred or quid in Mega Drive is quite a bit of money. But if you're into Mega Drive games and retro stuff or Master System or Game Gear, that's a bit of a no-brainer, really. Especially when you uh, use the custom firmware on you. It's a pretty fantastic machine. Uh, it's nice, small, and neat and pretty much works perfect i give it 10 out of 10 pretty fantastic machine i think so i say the mega drive mini is coming out soon um the mega drive mini does seem to have a few little issues like uh it does have 11 frames of lag on the sound it is emulation so inevitably you're going to get a frame or two of lag that's just how emulation works but all in all the mega drive mini does look pretty nice to be honest um but if you, I'm not sure how much I'm just a Mega Drive Mini. I think what are they about eighty quid. I think the Mega Drive Mini. Um, if you went, if you went, saved a bit more money, when the extra, I would definitely. If you're going to spend the extra and you're serious into your Mega Drive gaming, buy yourself an SG. I think that's the best way to play this thing on an uh, an LCD flat screen television. Um, I'm playing on a 1080p set and it looks perfect and apparently it looks damn good on a 4K set as well. So if you're playing on a 4K, use the 720p output. One other thing, if you want scan lines to look correct and work, make it look a bit more like a CRT, you have to use 720p option because the, the scan lines don't, they're not the correct size when you use uh, 1080p. So anyway guys, hopefully you enjoyed the review with this and I know it's a bit of a long one. 
but uh, there was a lot of stuff to go through on this machine. So hopefully you enjoyed the this, and I definitely recommend it. So pick yourself up one and have some fun gaming on your uh, 1080p or your 4K sets. So, all right, guys, I'll see you soon with uh, another review or a playthrough or something. So um, goodbye now, guys. Ta-da.